Zephyrin. Here I am. Hmm. I want to discuss something personal. No, I would just ask him to leave. I don't want him to leave. Care to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Hmm. Nothing new. Okay. Win before I forget. No, actually, <laughs> I don't have to ask it this time because we already talked. We talked about a condition. He will die. I like supply crates. I'm here for you. Uh, we need to talk. Of course. About us? What do you mean about us? I'm not with her. Hmm. You were a traveling minstrel. Do you have tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Hmm. Tell me about Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. And their pride? They thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the Darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Hmm. You know any stories from Ole? Of course. Olesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Ole. Go ahead. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield the sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Hmm. Continue, please. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney, but Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Hmm. Did she win the tourney? Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. I was actually hoping for a better ending. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. Hmm. Do you know any Ferelden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? 
<laughs> uh, Flemeth. Morrigan's mother was called Flemeth. Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she the Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devourer of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mists. <laughs> Hmm. They probably just had the same name. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell her that it's her. Maybe she doesn't believe it, but I... Uh, they probably just had the same name. I suppose that's possible. But why would one adopt the name of a feared abomination? Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Hmm. Could you tell me the whole story? Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyever. Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty. And they fell in love. Hmm. Oh, the plot thickens. Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyever, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. I mean, this sounds a bit similar to what Morrigan told us about her, but not all the same. I mean, Leliana is telling us the story that she heard, and Morrigan is telling us the story that Flemeth has told her, so... Obviously, it's a little bit different. Could you tell me about Alindra and her soul? No, actually, that was the story now. Um, there was another story I wanted to hear. Which one? Do you know anything about the Dalish? I know a little about your people, but I may be misinformed, and I would hate to offend you. Well, that is why we must learn about each other. I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the Elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great Elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the Elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the Elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The Elves claimed the Dales in the south, and settled there in the land of their own. It didn't last. The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry, 
and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The Chantry says the Elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The Chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the Elves, named for Andraste's similar march against De Winter. During the exalted march of the Dales, the Elven cities were sacked and the Elven state completely dissolved. Some of the Elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans, and instead became homeless wanderers. There were the Elves of the Dales, the Dalish. Yeah, and what do you know about Andraste? Andraste was the Maker's Chosen. The Maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the Maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the Maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is mm. why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. Mm. How did Andraste die? Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Maferath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Maferath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Maferath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinter, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinter. Hmm. Tevinter has a chantry, doesn't it? The Tevinter chantry claims that in Andraste's last moments, Hesarian's heart softened, and he heard the voice of the Maker telling him to end her suffering. He plunged his sword into her heart, and as her blood washed over his hands, he became one of the faithful. Dissenters said that the Archon only converted because he could not stem the tide of Andraste's cult, and was forced to do so to stay in power. We will never know hmm. for sure. Alright, thanks for all the stories. Let's move on. There was something here. Allied supply crates. Communal box for the resources you have collected for your troops. Turning crafting materials for the Dalish. The pack rattles with various items. Um, give all death roots. Turning. Actually, we'll leave the rest. Generous as always, Warden. I need the rest. I need it for crafting poultices. Uh, Roland, he has nothing to say. I know. Stan, you called. I have a question. I am hardly surprised. Okay, nothing new. Very well. Something you mentioned. Speak then. Nothing. Then I suggest we move on. Let's go. I am hardly surprised. Oh, sorry. I'm misclicked. Very well. Let's go. As you wish. Alright. Morrigan. I don't think there's anything new, but... Let's talk. Hmm? Mm. Can I ask you something? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Nothing new. Okay, never mind. Hmm? Something personal? We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Hmm. <laughs> I could ask her to join my tent, but we already... I mean, let's wait a bit more. 
We don't want to have it too often, you know. We want to cherish this. Never mind then. Uh, yeah, let's go to the Soldier's Pass. Wait, do I have something to sell? No, I think not. Because I was already selling things on the way. It will be done. Oh, right, all right, all right. Roland? Of course. Liliana? Indeed. And Morrigan. Indeed. Soldier's Pass. Of course. These ah, man. So many again. Is there any emissary? I don't see one. I have to get closer, Stop I guess. No, there is none. Shriek? You go for this one. And the dog goes in the middle of all of them. And howls. I am still on hard. Okay, I don't get it. Sometimes it's quite fine, and sometimes it's just not working that well. You are forced by him. Right, next one. Roland. He's down, nice. Murloc. Morrigan. Uh, Liliana and Morrigan. Morrigan is here. we can at least defeat those. I mean, yeah, we I can uh, enact revenge on them. Where the heck did, did, did it go? Make him be praised. There it is. some herbalism lesser injury kits and health poultices okay damn it we need three elf root for a health poultice well let's at least do those th those uh, injury kits then they're more important than health pulses anyway. Okay, two level ups for Roland. Um, like this, okay. Um, dum -dum. Level 12 for the next champion rank. Overpower, definitely. 
and threaten then. Self poultice, self poultice, self poultice. Quartz. Deep mushroom. I couldn't save those. Sadly. Anything more here? Very well. Poultice. This one as well. Just a little. I am impression. truly amazed. I'm a Bari. And a good one. I haven't seen many like you. Uh... Hmm. Okay. I will keep my distance, don't worry. You may not want to admit it, but I know you are also glad to see me again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on then. Oh, wait, wait, wait. She has used Song of Courage? Yes. But do we all have it? Yeah. Looks like we all have it. Yes. Okay. Actually, no, not this one. Let me use... I mean, I do have the other one now. The fire one. Can I put something out of here? Hmm. Let's do our disorient and put the fire one here. All right. What now? Did it work or do I have to do it again now? Did that work? Yes, it did. Okay, okay. Where am I here? Hmm. Felix. Felix. Let me get elf fruit first. Your wish? Is my command what? <laughs> Let me check. I can do health bolts. And elf fruit and lesser injury. Let's do health cultus and the lesser one as well. Let's talk to the merchant then. Uh, you'll have to forgive me if I seem a bit nervous. Not many people traveling in this part of Ferelden. Of course, that's part of my problem, isn't it? Mule got spooked by a wisp and ran off into the woods. Now, what do I do? Hmm. Are you asking me to find your mule? Oh, no, no, no. I sent my elf to do that. I mean, I sent my helper, Taran. Uh -huh. Nice fellow, that, Taran. Allow me to introduce myself. Felix de Grosbois, merchant and entrepreneur Gross. at what? your service. Well, I am Tunnel. Pleased to meet you. I don't normally take this route, but with the war, I was hoping for a bit of luck and good weather in the mountains. Sadly, I've had neither. Ugh, this trip has been one miserable disaster after another. I don't suppose you'd consider helping a fellow out? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. Hmm. What do you need? Of all the other things that went wrong, the worst is this artifact I brought in Jada. It's a control rod, I'm told, for a golem. No point in me keeping it, however, as I'll never get to use it. But uh, maybe you could? What is the catch? The catch? Uh, yeah, I uh, suppose it is a catch, isn't it? The catch is that the golem didn't come with the rod. <laughs> it's supposed to be down in a village down south, waiting to be activated. Even okay. if I could get down there, which I can't, <laughs> I understand the place has been overrun by Darkspawn. That's not such an issue for adventurous types like yourself, surely? Or I'm hoping that's so, at least. Hmm. What does a control rod do? I mean, it does control, but I'm asking anyway. The dwarf I brought it from said it activates and controls a golem. So long as you have it in your hand, the golem does what you say. Might be useful, no? I mean, you look like the sort who could use one, yes? 
<laughs> How do you know how this will even work? The fellow I brought it from is a long-standing contact. He didn't want to come to Ferelden, however, with all our... troubles. <laughs> he said he got it from the man who owned this golem. But to be honest, I have no idea if it will work. Hence, the low, low price. <laughs> what do you say? Hmm. How much do you want for it? Nothing. I just don't want to have to lug around something that might be taken for a gemstone by some bandit. To be honest, I don't even know if it'll be useful to you. I've paid too much to simply throw it away. All right, I think I could use it. Just as well. As I mentioned before, you'll find the golem down south, in a town called Honleith. I'll mark it here on your map. Just hold up the rod and say Dulafgar. Dulafgar. That will wake the golem up, so I'm told. I hope it works. And if it doesn't? Maybe you could look up the fellow who owned the golem before. If he's still about, that is. <laughs> Best of luck to you then. Now, I guess it's up to me to find that mule myself. Hmm. The Golem in Honleith. Quest updated. You have acquired a control rod from a merchant. According to his tale, the rod will activate a Golem in the remote village of Honleith in the southwest of Ferelden. You should journey there to see if his story rings true. Make it active. That's what we're going, going to do now. The merchant is gone. Let's go. Honleith, a remote village where an old golem supposedly lies waiting to be claimed. And there we are. Well, aren't we greeted nicely in here? Let's take a look around.